Good morning. I'm Pastor Mark Barnes, the Minister of Congregational Care here at Bethany United Methodist Church in Somerville. And doing the uh, word of encouragement this morning. Some of you might recognize where I'm at. Uh, you'll get, I'm in the entrance of Spell Chapel. This beautiful stained glass window above me. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a second. And some of you might recognize it. You know, uh, we've heard quite a bit uh, many times in the last couple months about the unseen enemy that we're all fighting. Uh, and that's the virus. And that this unseen enemy is, is everywhere. You know, it's a... Uh, Scripture has been telling us about an unseen enemy since from Genesis all the way to Revelations. And, and Scripture talks about spiritual warfare. And it, that is something that we need to be on guard, that we always need to be considering. And um, I got a call yesterday, and I was in my, sitting in my office preparing for uh, some for services coming up. And a call was with uh, from a... a first sergeant that I deployed with um, right after 9-11 and we were sitting on the border of Afghanistan and in, in, the, in the fall and the winter of uh, 2001 and I just said when I answered I heard his voice and I knew who it was I said how did you find me how did you find me and then he told me anyway through he got his daughter to help find me <laughs> anyway and we had this great conversation of just talking about uh, remembering. And he said, I just want to, he said, I just want to tell you, you know, how, how neat it was and how the power of God was so real. And we saw it in very visible ways, in ways that we shared a couple of stories that most people would never believe. They'd say, well, that's, that's unbelievable. Or that's a coincidence. And we, and both, uh, it was, uh, Sarnal and I was, he was first sergeant at that time, became a command chief later on. We'd say, we knew it was the hand of God that really did that. Because we knew that it was more than just a war that was going on around us, but there was also a spiritual war that was also going on. In that same place, uh, Reverend Scott Adams, who used to be in the position where I'm at before I got into this position, and he went back home to be with his family and near with his mother who was in failing help back in Shreveport, Alabama, Shreveport, Louisiana. Forgive me, Scott. Anyway, he was in that same deployment in, uh, place in October of 01, and they started a little uh, devotion, and they were kind of walking through the Psalms. And one of the, and they would have it at like five o'clock in the evening for about 15, 30 minutes. And then I, when I came in in November, I continued it on, and Scott went somewhere else, deployed somewhere else. But there was this, there was this uh, Navy SEAL Master Chief that was there, and he had his team. But he came every every night because we had it every night, and he was just a he was a neat guy. And I've shared in that one of the other services about him, and that he looked kind of like Tom Selleck, uh, and and just like I said, just a real quiet warrior. Anyway, I remember one night, and it was in January, and it, it, the war, things were really ramping up, and everything happened at night, and it was about three or four in the morning, and he was waiting to hear more back, kind of sad about his team, and I'm just kind of, and it's dark, and we're in this little place in the middle of nowhere, and this, I felt this person come up behind me and put his arm around me, and he said, he said, Padre, don't ever forget, the most important warriors are spiritual warriors. So here's this E-9 Master Chief, Navy SEAL, saying, reminding me what was really important. It is so true. And I, and I guess that's my message in, in this time of encouragement this morning to you, is that the most, you, you may not be wearing a uniform. Um, you may have never been in the military. But the most important thing to you is to be a fit spiritual warrior. You know, as a, ch as a chaplain, we were considered non-combatants, and which meant that we didn't carry weapons. Uh, it was illegal for us to carry weapons, but it was kind of a it was kind of a mis misnomer because we really were combatants, and we were as the um, first sergeant was telling me yesterday, reminding me, he says we were combatants on a spiritual level that we were carrying on and carrying on the fight for all those around us 
and petitioning God's power and, and God's grace and God's wisdom. And I think it's still that, that, that even though we may not feel like we're on the front lines of a literal battleground, we really are every day in our lives, whether it's, you know, taking care of uh, trying to teach our kids and homeschooling or taking care of all the stress that's going on or wondering if, you know, am I going to have a job or if I don't have a job, am I going to, where am I going to get money? We're going to get this. The Lord said, rely on me. Because the enemy is real and the enemy usually it can either kill us with a you know, you ever heard of the um, death by a thousand cuts, the little nagging things or the little things when we compromise or one of the things we let the enemy in. And I'm not going to, that's just a whole nother devotion or a sermon on what the end of who the enemy is. But it's, that's why we should keep up, our, be on guard and be, and be strong spiritual warriors. Um, this this uh, picture behind me, is uh, the stained glass was given to the glory of God by Leif and Lance and Kirk Anderson in memory of their mother, Jean Safford Anderson. And it is the um, armor of God. It says, the helmet of salvation, feet, um, feet shod with the gospel, preparation of peace, the sword of the spirit, the breastplate of life, righteousness, gird the truth, put on the whole armor of God, the shield of faith. And if you know and you've heard sermons that almost everything on there is defensive, except for the, the sword. And, and, and that's the sword is the word of God. And so I just, I guess my encouragement to you today is that you are in battle. We're in battle with the, the coronavirus, I guess. But even a bigger battle is, is a spiritual battle that's going on in this world. And that we're fighting all the time and that we're, we need to be have the armor of God on. I'm, I'm going to read that scripture to you one more time, Miles, but I want to give you a quote, and this is from uh, General George Marshall. Some of you might know he was in World War I, a great, great leader, probably one of the greatest leaders and generals we've ever had in this country. Also became the, um, what I guess the equivalent of Secretary of Defense now, it used to be a war, and then Secretary of State. Um, but he, he had this quote, and he says, For I look upon the spiritual life of the soldier even as more important than his physical equipment. The soldier's heart, the soldier's spirit, the soldier's soul are everything. Unless the soldier's soul sustains him, he cannot be relied upon and will fail himself, his commander, and his country in the end. This is true not only for those who are serving in the military, but all of us who desire to succeed in the battle of everyday life. That we need to put on the whole armor of God. A friend of mine gave me this, this Bible right when I retired out of the military. It's called a warrior's Bible. And he's talking about a spiritual warrior. I'm going to read to you from the, the scripture that I've been talking all around and about this morning. It's Ephesians 6, 10 through 19. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith which, with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, or all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I pray that, uh, my prayer the, this morning is that we will all, in this spiritual battle that we face in everyday life, that we will take up the armor of God and be a great spiritual warrior. God bless you.